Hello everyone, I'm Ned Bellavance, Ned1313 on Twitter, and this is five things to know about Office 365 and Azure. Okay, so number one is to secure your identity. Identity is the new currency when it comes to the cloud. You no longer have a network perimeter that all your applications live behind. When it comes to accessing services within the cloud, it's all about identity. So how do you secure that identity? Well, number one is to enable multi-factor authentication. You absolutely have to do this. And many cloud services like Office 365 and Microsoft Azure have made it relatively straightforward to do that. So that's highly recommended, not just for administrators, but also for regular end users. There's also a feature within Office 365 and Azure called conditional access. And that enables you to determine the level of access for a user based on things like their location. Within Azure Active Directory and Office 365, users can have the role of global admin. And just like domain administrators, you should try to limit the membership of that global admins as much as possible. And you can do that by creating custom roles for users that do need to perform administrative functions, but don't need global admin access. There's also a feature called Privileged Identity Management that allows you to temporarily grant elevated permissions to a user and then revoke their permissions once they've completed whatever the task is. In addition to securing your identity, you also need to secure your data. In the same way that you can no longer assume that your identity lives within a perimeter, your data no longer lives within a perimeter. It's going to move outside of your corporate network. It's important to apply things like labeling to your data so you know what kind of data you're dealing with. And then based off of those labels, you can determine whether encryption needs to be applied before this information leaves your organization. And the way that you can do that is through policies. Azure Information Protection allows you to leverage labeling and policies to determine what level of protection is needed for data and where data can move around your organization and beyond. In addition to securing your data, you also have to protect your data. There's a false idea out there that the cloud is responsible for protecting all of your data in all the ways you need it protected, and that's not necessarily true. For issues like retention, Office 365 doesn't know what your retention requirements are for different kinds of data. That's something you need to go in and configure yourself. Likewise, Office 365 and Microsoft Azure don't back anything up by default. Your Exchange Online Mailboxes, your SharePoint sites, your Azure VMs, none of those are backed up by default. That's something you need to turn on by choice. You may also need to archive data outside of Office 365 for long-term retention and compliance. There are some features that exist within Azure and Office 365 for that, but you may want to store those archives on a service that's outside of Azure and Office 365. When you think about who's responsible for applying all of the security and protection, it's going to be your people. And so you do have to train your people to interact with Office 365 and Microsoft Azure. And that absolutely includes administrators. They are going to be encountering a completely new management plane when they move to 365 and Azure. You need to provide proper training so they know how to interact with that management plane. Likewise, your end users are going to be presented with new software, features, and functionality. There's a ton of awesome improvements when it comes to security and features within Office 365. But if your end users have not received the proper training for it, they're going to have no idea how to use it. The training also needs to be an ongoing effort. The features and services within Office 365 and Microsoft Azure are constantly evolving. Your training efforts also have to be constantly evolving to keep your admins and end users informed. Finally, and this one is not necessarily obvious, which is why I bring it up, you need to plan your network to adapt to the needs of Office 365 and Microsoft Azure. One of the top things is that your traffic patterns are going to change once you make the migration. Whereas most of your traffic was going back to a local data center for applications, once you move those applications to Office 365 and Microsoft Azure, the traffic now goes there as opposed to your data center. So you're going to need to plan for performance when it comes to your egress links 
to Office 365 and Azure. One of the more common networking patterns at large organizations is to backhaul all internet traffic to a central site for security and examination. However, once you move to Office 365 and Azure, that traffic pattern probably doesn't make sense anymore. What makes more sense is to plan for egress at the branch site. You are going to have to put in some level of traffic inspection and security at those egress sites, but your end users are going to see significant improvement in performance. So those are the big five things that you need to know about Office 365 and Microsoft Azure. Secure your identity, secure your data, protect your data, train your people, and plan your network. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.